After the first case, there was an appeal by the Queensland Attorney General against the leniency of the sentence because of the seriousness of the crime. The Queensland Court of Appeal upheld the interpretation of Section 129 that it was an offence to destroy evidence even before the writs had been issued. It also upheld the conviction of the sentence, yet there are numerous parallels between that case and the Heiner affair. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But there were no charges laid against those in government who destroyed evidence of gang rape and child abuse. What was the difference then? Do you want me to spell it out? One case involved a Christian minister and a white girl, so action was taken. The other involved public officials and, can I say it, a young Aboriginal girl, so who cared? Yeah. How high did all this cover up go? Yeah. Well, couldn't the state governor intervene if there was a clear, well, if clearly the law was ignored? No less than the Governor General herself was involved. Wow. She was drawn into the Heiner affair, but for actions while she was state governor, that is. Oh. Your Excellency, you are highly qualified in the law, and in fact you qualified at the Queensland Bar, and then later taught uh, law school at the uh, University of Queensland. That's correct. Uh, in 2003, on the recommendation of the Premier Peter Beattie, you were appointed the Governor of Queensland, and then later in September 2008, you were appointed the 25th Governor General of Australia on the recommendation of the then Prime Minister Kevin Rudd. I was privileged by those appointments. Going back to your time as Governor of Queensland, uh, you became involved in the Heiner Affair. Well, uh, refresh my memory on that. On uh, the 13th of October 2003, and again on the 20th of September 2004, a former union official named Kevin Lindeberg appealed to you as the Queensland Governor to take action over what he described as criminal activity by officials of the government, the government that operated on your appointment. Uh, he submitted to your office a full and detailed description of the events that had taken place. He asked you to act as the final arbiter uh, to enforce the rule of law. Well, I don't recall the details on that case, but I'll take your word for it. Well, you later informed Mr. Lindeberg on the, on the 24th of May in 2005 that uh, you had considered the matter after taking advice from the government and uh, had decided to do nothing. Well, that's the usual response to matters of that type. Let me get this straight. You took a complaint uh, that members of the government had broken the law and then approached members of that same government for advice on the complaint? Well, the governor is quite restricted in what he or she can do. Uh, uh, I have to follow certain conventions. But surely uh, the buck has to stop somewhere, and uh, if it lands with a proverbial thud on the, uh, the desk of the governor or governor general, it, it stops there. Well, um, the usual convention is that the governor general almost always follows the advice of the Prime Minister, and the State Governor almost always follows the advice of the State Premier. Well, isn't it a fact that, as Governor, you had the power to sack the government? Are you uh, talking about the Lang government in 1932 that was dismissed? Well, uh, that was for illegally um, reacting to the finance and uh, I think they refused to pay the British bondholders their uh, investment income. And this was a proven illegality? Well, it was proven to the satisfaction of the governor at the time. So aren't the actions of the Queensland government, the state government, in relation to the Heiner affair, uh, much more serious? Uh, they, uh, they involve an alleged breach of the criminal law rather than simply financial arrangements. There was never a breach of criminal law proven. And the decision to prosecute or not to prosecute rests with the recognised authorities. Thank you for your time, Your Excellency. Okay.
So how does all this end? I don't know. Someone tell me how it should end. The shredders are charged, including the members of the cabinet, who broke the law and ordered that the evidence be destroyed. Um, the young people abused are ecstatic that they received justice. But that would never happen. All goes on as before. The officials sip their cups of tea. You know that, Stan. I think that attitude is very negative. I mean, it's true. Well, oh, Australians always demand a fair go. True. You tell them the story, and they'll be ready. You really think so? Here's some advice. Take a bucket of water, put your hand in, pull it out. Is there still a hole? Doesn't make much difference. It's dreadful. There's an old saying, be you ever so high the law is above you. It's a great principle that's meant to embody the rule of law. But that principle doesn't work in the Heiner case. Some people are clearly above the law. Oh, you're such a cynic. <laughs> I may be cynical, but admit, admit that I'm right. <laughs> Polys these days are all spin, no principle. Anyway, shall we do it? Do this production, I mean. Yes. Oh, let, let, let's think about it. Would we get sued? What? Like, is this stuff defamatory or libellous? No, oh, libellous. I don't think so, because it's all in the public domain. But in any event, how can you weigh that with telling a true story about the injustice of what was done to that girl? And, and others as well. Yeah. Stan, look, it's all good, but I've got to go. Yes, so must I. Okay, well, meeting the plot. Actually, look more interesting. You want to hear the most funny Australian joke? That is so life. offensive, monkey. The most funny Australian joke in whole life. Why did you cross the road? Why?
Thank <laughs> you.